Please view this short animation and try to analyze whether A made an offer to B. A and B were studying together when A said to B, I am selling my pen for two pounds. B replied, I'll take it. Did A make an offer to B? Or was he merely inviting B to make him an offer which is called an invitation to treat? When B said, I'll take it, did A become bound by his response? This distinction between a valid offer and an invitation to treat is crucial because it affects B's ability to create a binding contract. Let's suppose A's answer to B's response was, Oh, I changed my mind. I'm not selling my pen anymore. What would be the effect of this response if A's initial statement is considered an offer? Can he go back on his words after B accepted his offer? What if A's initial statement is considered merely an invitation to treat? Can he then go back on his words? Yes, because there was no offer. There was no offer there for B to accept. B's response, I'll take it, will then be considered an offer. It is then up to A to accept or reject that offer. When A says, oh, I changed my mind, he's basically rejecting B's offer and he has the right to do so. How would you change A's initial statement where he said, I'm selling my pen for two pounds to make it a clearly valid offer? How would you change the words? Think about it. How about if A had said, I'm offering you this pen for two pounds. You have half an hour to decide if you want it. Or, I'm offering this pen to you for two pounds. Do you want it? Or, another scenario, this pen is yours for two pounds if you want it. It would have been easier to analyze this scenario and say that it was an offer rather than an invitation to treat. Unfortunately, people often do not express themselves very clearly in real life. And this is why we see these questions arising in the courts. Defendant, the counsel, sent the claimant, Gibson, a letter stating that the council may be prepared to sell the house to you at the purchase price of £2,725. If you would like to make a formal application to buy your council house, please complete the form and return it to me as soon as possible. Mr. Gibson completed and returned the form. In the meanwhile, council then changed its policy on the sale of council houses. Gibson was advised that the council was unable to proceed with his application because of this change in the policy. Gibson brought the action claiming that the council's letter was an offer which he had accepted by returning the application form. House of Lords emphasized the fact that council's letter stated that they may be prepared to sell and invited Gibson to make a formal application to buy. The council never intended the letter to allow Mr. Gibson to create a binding agreement between them and simply meant to inform him that they may be willing to sell to him if he made an offer. They therefore only made an invitation to treat. Mr. Gibson's reply amounted to an offer but this was never accepted by the council. So they were under no obligation to sell. Oftentimes, seller will not have given any thought to whether he's making an offer or an invitation to treat and there will be no clear intention. They become interested in this question only when things go wrong and the agreement is questioned in the court of law. There are many common everyday situations where it is difficult to know the actual intentions. For example, when an item is displayed in a shop or is advertised. I want to give you a thinking point here. If you advertised your old books for sale on a website, are you offering to sell your books to anyone who reads your ad or are you inviting others to make an offer? Do you want to sell your books to every reader who responds to your ad? For the sake of certainty, quotes sometimes fall back onto a presumption that it is commonly presumed that vendor only intended to make an invitation to treat. You must remember, however, that the presumption comes into play only when the intention of the vendor is unclear. If you have clear evidence of the vendor's intention, you do not need to fall back on presumption. 
You should therefore look first for any evidence of the offerer's intention. Partridge vs. Crittenden, 1968 Partridge placed an ad offering to sell a live bird contrary to Protection of Birds Act. It was held that the advertisement was merely an invitation to treat. Because the form of the words used was ambiguous, we can say that the court presumed that the ad was an invitation to treat. They presumed that the ad was an invitation to treat because it made practical sense and Mr. Partridge had not said anything in the ad that was contrary. If this ad counted as an offer, Mr. Partridge would have been in a difficult position as presumably he had a limited stock of birds and he would have been bound to provide the type of birds mentioned in the ad for the said price to everyone who accepted it. US cases are not binding in England and Wales but they are often used as an example of how a case might be decided in England and Wales. Let's look at Lefkowitz v. Great Minneapolis Surplus Store, 1957. Lefkowitz put an ad for three fur coats for $1 each, first come, first served. It was held to be an offer and not an invitation to treat. Reasoning behind the decision, was that it was reasonable to reject usual presumption of an invitation to treat and conclude that the shopkeeper intended to make an offer to the first three customers. Had it not been limited to the first three customers, then the courts would have fallen back on the presumption that it is commercially unreasonable to provide fur coats for $1 to the whole Minnesota. Unless Lefkowitz had enough fur coats for everyone in Minnesota. But what if everyone in Minnesota wanted 10 coats each? You see how unreasonable it becomes if a general ad is considered an offer? By a general ad, I mean the one that does not limit itself to serve maybe first three or first five customers, for example. So we can conclude that many ads like the one in Partridge versus Crittenden are merely invitations to treat. However, if the advertiser makes his intention to offer clear through the language of the ad, then the ad will be an offer as in Lefkowitz.